Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to run an NMR spectrum. The sample has been prepared in the lab as shown in the previous videos. And no solvents or reagents besides your sample can be brought into the NMR lab. This is the NMR spectrometer. It uses a very large magnet should not be approached with any magnetic sensitive materials or large magnetic objects. These should be left on the other side of the room. The NMR has a carousel in which the samples are placed to be analysed. The main console generates and receives the frequencies used in the NMR probe. To the left of the console is the data acquisition unit. This processes the data received and communicates this to the PC. The ready light should be lit and if the NMR is processing a sample, the busy light may also be lit. If the red alarm light is lit, please inform Dr. Lewis, Bob Knight or Rob McDonald immediately. Before placing the tube into the holder, the glass must be thoroughly cleaned with a tissue to remove any residue. If residue is present, it can build up in the machine and cause problems. To load the sample, it must be placed in a Teflon spinner. These must always be stored upright in the styrofoam holder and have a lower section fully extended. Once the tube has been thoroughly cleaned, it can be carefully placed into the Teflon holder. Then, using a depth gauge, the tube can be pushed down to the correct depth. If the tube is loose in its holder, please inform Dr. Lewis immediately, as if the tube becomes loose in the machine, it can cause damage. The tube must now be held at all times by the spinner to prevent contamination. Before the tube is inserted into the machine, an empty space must be found out of the 16 spaces available, not only on the machine carousel, but on the corresponding board. Once a space has been found, your sample can be inserted into the carousel and the appropriate name must be written on the board along with the file number for the experiment. Long-term users will be provided with their own named beaker. Project students and visitors will use their supervisor's name and beaker. This is so that if the sample is left in the machine, it can be moved to a corresponding beaker for you to collect at a later date, although samples should be removed as soon as possible after analysis. It is important to write the corresponding name on the board so the samples can be easily collected. Key information is then written into the NMR logbook next to the computer. Once the sample has been added to a numbered holder, the experiment is set up on the computer. Four windows will be active on screen. Delta, Spectrometer Control, Automation and Automation Q window. If the queue window has been closed, it should reappear once another experiment is submitted. If the other windows are missing, please inform Dr. Lewis. The spectrometer control window should have a yellow box showing its connection to the spectrometer. If the connection has dropped or the red light on the data acquisition unit is on, please inform Dr. Lewis. The automation window is where the experiments are submitted. First, enter your directory, followed by a forward slash and the experiment file name, into the box at the top. This is done by holding your cursor over the box and entering the text. You may then want to enter details of the experiment underneath. Once this is done, the slot number is entered. And then the solvent chosen, in my case deuterated chloroform. The temperature control should be off. Next, choose the type of experiment you wish to use. I'm using proton analysis and click continue. As you can see, the sample has been submitted to the queue and is now being run. 
If your sample requires more than 30 minutes to run, such as dilute carbon samples, it will be delayed until after 6pm, otherwise it will be added to the queue normally. For this reason, avoid submitting long experiments until late afternoon. If Proton is the type of analysis required, the settings have been pre-configured so you can simply click the button marked Proton 2 and click Continue. If you require carbon analysis and have a pure dry sample, you can press Carbon and Carbon 13 will be analysed. Other options include running Carbon Depth 135, Standard Fluorine and, if the sample contains silicone with CHs directly attached, 29 silicone depth, otherwise a normal 29 silicone can be run. Also available is phosphorus and 11 boron. 2D NMR can also be run using Proton and FG Cozy as well as Proton and FG DQF Cozy. Also, proton carbon correlation can be run. There are many other experiments available and more will be discussed in further videos. Once the experiment is complete, you can remove your NMR tube and holder from the machine. If they have already been removed, please check the beakers with yours or your lecturer's corresponding name. If you're running an experiment which requires more detailed analysis, the advanced settings can be used. To open the advanced settings, simply click Options and then Advanced Mode. You can then alter the settings of an experiment. After choosing the type of analysis, the Advanced box will appear. Here you can change the number of scans by multiplying the number in the box and hitting enter. If this is the case, you should set the signal to noise ratio to zero. Once your scan is running, you can remove the advanced settings by clicking the button at the top. If 2D analysis is to be run, the switch on the gradient field supply, the box on top of the main console, must be flipped from dummy to probe. If there are no more 2D samples in the queue, the switch can be flipped back into dummy position.